case where the node has no children and the case where the node has one child. But what if the node to be removed, let's say it's this node here, has two children, okay? Now we're kind of stuck because if we get rid of this node, we could use either child to like replace it, but then what do we do with the other child, right? Um, it's kind of a mess. H here's the strategy we take. And there's two different strategies we could take. It doesn't matter which one we do. We're gonna find a node to replace, we're gonna find a node to replace this node with, okay? For example, a node that we could put here, if we look in the right subtree, that is all of this, if we find the least child in the right subtree, it could go right here, okay? The reason why is if we find the least child, so we look through this and like, here's the least child in the right subtree. We'll talk about how we find that in a second. But if we were to put this up here, the tree still works because everything remaining in the right subtree is greater than the least child of the right subtree. And everything in the left subtree already has to be less than the child because it was in the right subtree. So we have to find the least child in the right subtree and put it up here instead, okay? If you're like, could we find the greatest child in the left subtree? Yeah, that works too, it's the same thing, doesn't matter. But we're going to stick with the least child of the right subtree because that's how the book did their graphic. So we have something to look at. The least child of the right subtree <coughs> has at most a right child. It can't have a left child because if it did have a left child, that child would be the least child of the right subtree. So we know that this node only has at most um, one child. And so therefore, when we stick it up here, if we keep track of its parent, we can have its parent refer to its child if it has one. That's how we fix up our tree. Honestly, this looks kind of like a mess. What's that? Yeah, like for what do we do with the, the, yeah. So once we find the least child in the right subtree, we want to put it up here in our tree. But it might, it itself might have a child, but only a right child. So we have to do something with this. What we do with its child is we link it to the smallest child's parent. So the, the left child used to be this node, but we're gonna move it up here. So now the left child of the parent will be this node instead. That's how we have to do it. This algorithm for removing a node from a binary search tree, it looks like a nightmare. Okay, if if you, we were to sit down and just be like, we're going to write an algorithm for removing a binary, a node from a binary search tree, it would be really hard to do. What I hope we're going to see over the course of like two days, that's how hard this algorithm is, is that if we handle each case individually, and if we break each case down into a series of small steps, each step isn't that bad, right? So if I said, write code to remove a node from a binary search tree, it'd be like, that's overwhelming, forget it, I give up. But if instead it's like, can you write a piece of code that find, that for a given node finds the smallest child in its right subtree? Be like, I think I could do that. That doesn't seem too bad, right? So that's what we're doing here. We're gonna break it into small steps, implement each small step, and then when we put it all together, the whole thing's gonna work. All right. So let's try that. Let's see what small steps we need to do to make this case work. So I'm gonna to switch to VS Code. I'm gonna commit my changes first. And here's the code that we wrote previously, case one and case two, all of this. So let's start here with what if the node to be removed, what if neither subtree 
of the node to be removed is empty. That's case three. This is the most challenging case, but let's do it in really small pieces. First, let's just find the least element of the right subtree. Let's just do that first. We need a couple of new local variables to help us with this of type node. One I'm going to call the least parent. So this is the parent of the least node of the right subtree. But that's too much to type, so we're just going to say it's the least parent. We're going to initialize it to to be removed, and I'll show why in a second. We're also going to have a local variable for that least node, and we're going to initialize that to to be removed dot right. Here's why, looking at our picture, we need to explore the right subtree. The least child in the right subtree <coughs> could be, oops, could be this node right here. Um, Cause it might be like, it might, there might be no left child at all. So we're gonna start here with this as our first candidate for the least node, but we need to keep track of its parent the whole time. Its parent starts out as the node to be removed. <coughs> so we set least parent to node to be removed. We set least to be node to be removed's right ch child. And then we're going to go from here. We're going to keep looking. Does this node have a left child? If so, we're going to explore that way. We're, we'll say this could be the least node. And this node will be its parents, so on and so forth. So we need a while loop while least dot left is not equal to null. If least dot left is null, we're done. We found the least child of the right subtree. But if it's not null, we're not there yet. So update the variable least parent to least and update least to least dot left. We traverse to the left. Oh, I'm so sorry. There we go. So here's an example of what I mean by like breaking it into a smaller step. This part isn't too bad for finding the least node of the right subtree and that node's parent. That's what this little piece of code does. Once we get to this point, least refers to the least child in the right subtree. We found it and we know it's parent. That's important. Important progress. So what do we do once we have this? Looking at our picture again, we have a variable referencing the node to be removed right here. We have a variable referencing least, which is the least child in the right subtree here. We have a variable refer referencing that node's parent. So we know this node, this node, and this node. Okay. This diagram is labeled case 3A. There is a case 3B. I should probably make a picture of that. Case 3B is what if the least node of the right subtree is this node right here, meaning none of this exists. This is the least node of the right subtree. In that case, its parent is the node to be removed. So that's like a special case we have to handle. As long as it's down here somewhere, it's it's all the same. Okay. So we're going to handle both of those cases. First, what we're going to do though, there's a lot of links here to left children and right children all over the place. 
So we're not going to actually move this node object up to here. We're simply going to take this node object's data and move that up to here, replacing the data and node to be removed. So we're actually not even removing the node. We're just swapping the data because otherwise we'd have to clean up all these left and right links, which would be a pain. So let's do that first. Oops. Move the data. So to be removed dot data equals least dot data. That moves the data. At this point, we need to unlink the least child. Back to the diagram. If the parent of the least child, let's say this is the least child. If the parent is the node to be removed, we want this node to refer to the least child's right child, if any. So let's do that case first. That's the 3B case. So if least parent equals node to be removed, oops, sorry, to be removed, least parent dot right, wow, equals least dot right. Otherwise, it's the case that we have in the diagram. And we can simply say least parent dot left equals least dot right. It's always least dot right. There is no least dot left. If there were, then it might be the least. So this handles whatever child that the node that we moved up might have. Least dot right might be null which is fine. We're just going to assign these to null. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, we don't need to handle that as a special case. This is what it takes to handle case three. This is not a simple algorithm. But we broke it down into multiple cases, in each case, into multiple steps. And while still challenging, it's certainly not impossible. 